Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here and I'm a watercolor artist. So in today's video, I'm gonna be painting mushrooms for you. I was outside cleaning my yard for the fall cleanup and I noticed I had a lot of little mushrooms growing around my yard. So I was inspired to paint one for you. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so to get started, I've got my Arches watercolor paper. I've got my Grumbacher paint brushes, a size zero and a size five, my pencil, my eraser, my water, my paper towel, and I've got my Winsor Newton watercolors. I'll let you know what colors I'm using as I'm going along, um, but if you don't have these colors, don't worry about it. Pick up any color you have. So we're going to start by just sketching out a couple mushrooms on here. And I'm going to start with the cap of the mushroom. I'm going to put it right in the middle of the page here. If you want to put yours a little bit more over, you know, start thinking about your composition. And I'm going to round out the bottom of the mushroom here. And then I'm just going to put another little curve like that. So this is the bottom of the mushroom and this is more of the cap of it. And this is the bottom of the cap. This is where the little stem comes in. So then you're going to come in and you're going to put another little curve. And let's say we want this mushroom to be curved a little bit. And I'm going to make him a little bit wider as we get down to the bottom. And then you can curve it down there as well. Okay. And we're going to come in and erase these lines in a little bit. I'm going to have another mushroom. Actually, I'm going to have this mushroom kind of um, kind of an upside down type mushrooms that I've I've seen. Just Google any image of mushrooms, um, and a million different mushrooms will come up. Just pick a few that you really like. So this one here, I'm just going to start out. It's going to be kind of like a upside down mushroom that I I saw an image of. So we're going to start out with the top of the mushroom like this. And then we're gonna bring it down. So that's what I mean by it being kind of an upside down mushroom. It kind of grows up like that, almost like a flower. You're gonna bring in your stem. The stem I'll probably just have come right in front of this one, like that. And just be really sketchy about this. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can go ahead and erase your lines later. All right, and then I think I'm gonna have another mushroom maybe coming out, maybe a, a flatter one coming out this way. So it'll be just like wider, but flatter. Make the bottom of your mushroom. So it almost looks like a football shape at this point. And then you're gonna bring in that other curve. So you're seeing the bottom of that cap. And then do another little curve here for that stem. And I'll have this stem go behind that one. All right, so we've got like three little mushrooms at this point. So go ahead and start erasing the lines that you don't need. So this mushroom is in front of this one, so I'm going to go ahead and erase the stem on that one that is peeking through. And then I'm going to erase the stem down here because I want these two stems in front of that one. And actually, I think I want to reshape this mushroom. I'm not happy with the shape of that. So I'm going to erase the whole top of it all right and i'm going to do it again i think i want it to be wider a little bit more dramatic like that and actually i want this uh, yeah maybe i want it to, the stem part to be a little bit lower okay maybe more like there So make any shape mushrooms you want. It doesn't really matter. Just have fun with it. Like I Googled so many images of mushrooms and there's so many different types out there. And you can play around with the shape of it also as you go along and you start to paint it. All right, so if you wanna go ahead and lighten up some of your lines, I'm not gonna go ahead and lighten up too many just cause I want you to see them on the video. So this is all I'm gonna do at this point. So I'm gonna take my size five and I'm gonna make this mushroom up here red. So I'm gonna go ahead and get just the cap of the mushroom nice and wet. Not too wet though, just you want a good amount on there, but not too much that it's making a puddle because then your paint just really won't spread really nicely. So just make sure that's even all the way around. I'm gonna pick up my uh, cad red and I'm going to start with my left side and I'm gonna bring it over to my right side because also start thinking about where you want your light source to come from. My light source is gonna be coming from the right. 
So everything on the right side is going to be a little bit lighter. And everything on the left side is going to be a little bit more shadowed. All right. Now, if you don't like all that white space right there, you can let it just blend and do its thing. It'll probably come together eventually. But if you want, just take a clean brush and just help it along a little bit, just like that. And if you want, at this point, you can go ahead and start dropping in a little bit more red on the shadowed side. Whatever side you want to make um, the shadowed side, just start dropping in a little bit more paint. And I'm just pouncing it in a little bit. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. Just clean water, just doing the cap of the mushroom. And I think I'm gonna do this one yellow. I've got a yellow ochre here. Drop in a little bit of my yellow ochre. Starting again on the left side, dragging it over to my right side, like that. If you're left with this white space here, you can let it do its thing and blend naturally, or you can help it along a little bit. Just drag some of it over with a clean brush, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this one wet as well. Now this one we're doing the top because, like I said, it was an up, up, it's almost like an inside out, upside down mushroom. So I'm doing the top of the mushroom on this one. And this one here, I think I'm going to do more of a terracotta. So I'm starting with the left side, and I'm bringing it over. Now this is a nice, deep color. So if you want, if it's a little bit too saturated for you, wash off your brush, dry it off on your paper towel so you don't have that much water on there, and just kind of drag it over. And you can pick up some of that paint as you're going along and dabbing it off on your paper towel. All right, I am going to let that dry and I'm gonna start with the stems. Now I've got a burnt umber and a black and a Payne's gray. So I'm gonna be kind of doing a mixture of those three. So I'm just getting the stem saturated. I'm not doing the under part of the mushroom yet because that is still wet and I don't really want those um, to bleed together. So I'm gonna do a burnt umber mixture with a little bit of black, and I'm gonna, again, think about what side is shadowed, my left side again, of the stem, and then you can always help it along a little bit. Clean off your brush, dry it off, and then just lift up some of that paint on the highlighted side again, just like that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other stem. I'm gonna pick up that mixture again of the burnt umber, and a little bit of black. And I'm just gonna go on the left side and then carry it around on the bottom here. You could leave it like that and let it do its thing or with a clean brush, you can help it along a little bit like that. And go ahead and do your other stem. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and that's still, it's still damp, but it's not bad. It's not really, really wet. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add a little bit more paint. And I'm gonna add a little bit more paint to the left side of the mushroom just to deepen it up a little bit. Clean brush, just damp. I'm gonna wet it and drag it over. Okay. You can help it along just like that. So now you've got a nice saturated color on the left side and more of a light wash on the right side. I'm gonna go ahead and do that to each of the mushrooms with the same color that I had just used. I'm gonna go ahead and dry this. Then we're gonna start on the bottoms of the mushrooms. Okay, so they're nice and dry, and I'm going to go ahead and start doing the bottoms of the mushrooms. I'll start with this one, and I'm just going to get it wet here. And I'm going to pick up pretty much that same mixture that I had made. Now, this part of the mushroom is kind of like a brownish white, depending on what mushrooms you're looking at. So I'm going to give it just a really light little wash of my burnt umber. 
you can go right up to your color here that you had done for the cap. And I'm gonna do that to the same thing on this one. Just gonna wet it a little bit. Pick up some of that color and go around it. And pick up a little bit of that color on the side. So you're still gonna have your highlighted side and your shadowed side, even on the bottom of the mushroom as well. Now this part of the mushroom is a lot bigger here. So more surface to get wet. It's still the bottom of the mushroom, but it's kind of reverse. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on my left side, bring it down to the stem, and then drag it over. Now, if you really want a lot of that nice and white, then go. you don't have to go ahead and um, drag it all the way. I want a little bit of a wash on this side, so I am gonna go ahead and drag it a little bit. All right, very good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more depth into these stems. So I'm just picking up the same colors I had originally used, black and burnt umber, and I'm gonna just deepen up some of these stems. Start thinking about where your shadows are, start thinking about any details, like if there's lines on your mushrooms, I'm just using the tip here of the paintbrush. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of these lines. If you wanna switch over to your size zero, you can do that. I'm just gonna carefully use the tip of this paintbrush of my size five. I'm gonna put a little bit of detail in here, just some lines. Now this part of the mushroom is probably gonna be a little bit darker because it's kind of hiding be behind two mushrooms, so it's gonna be more shadowed, like that. And go ahead and do this mushroom. And you might, not, you might have enough paint on your brush that you don't need to keep reapplying the paint depending on how dark or how light you want these lines. But just go ahead and add a little bit of um, dimension in there. Now, this part of the mushroom is still wet, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more, but I am gonna pick up my size zero, and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that original color that I had painted, and if you wanna do little, like, almost like little C's, because there's gonna be little dots on this mushroom that we're gonna come in and we're gonna bring in a little bit of that, um, the bleed proof white. We're gonna fill it in right there, but I want a little bit of a shadow where that bleed proof white is gonna be. So I'm going in with just my red, adding a little bit of a, like a C. So it's not a complete circle because you still want a highlighted side and a shadowed side. So this is gonna be the shadowed side of those little bumps on my mushroom. You can go ahead with a little water and blend it in if you want to. Just like that. And like I was saying before, if you wanted to leave, you could use a little bit of frisket. You could put a little frisket on there. So then that way you could just, when you peel it off, the white of the paper is showing. Then that way you don't have to use the bleed proof white. I just chose to do the whole mushroom cap, but there's several different ways you can do this. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up that yellow ochre and do the same thing to this one. Just little C's where I think I want some, some dots. Take clean water and just kind of blend it out a little bit. So it's like a shadowed side of your dot. There. So then that way, when we go ahead and put those little white dots in there, it'll look like the sh it's making a shadow on the left side as well. Um, this one here, I'm not gonna do dots. I think I'm gonna go in with just some burnt umber and make like little streaks almost, like little circles. I'm just going in a little shaky line, making all these little ovals. So it'll kind of look like it's got some shadow in there. Just like that. So it's just my burnt umber on top of that terracotta color. I'm gonna let it dry just like that. All right, I am gonna go ahead. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my burnt umber with my size zero and with just a very light little line, I'm gonna go over and just deepen up those lines that I had made before. Just one little continuous stroke all the way down. 
and I'm barely touching my paper because I want it to be nice and thin. Pick up a little bit more paint. So that adds a little bit more dimension, a little bit more detail. You can round it off also where that stem meets. Round it off at the bottom. Pick up a little bit of water, blend it in a little bit. If you think it just looks too, um, if you think it looks just too perfect, just add a little water, blend it in a little bit here and there. And we're gonna go ahead and start making the lines go up the mushroom too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn my page. I'm gonna take my burnt umber and depending on which way you want your little curves to go, like this one here, I'm gonna start in the middle, take from the stem up to the, the top here, and then I'm just gonna curve it. So my little lines are curving out this way. And then I'm gonna do the other side, and I'm gonna curve them out the other way, like that. So you've got those lines there on the mushroom. All right, I'm gonna take my five, and I'm just gonna blur them out a little bit where I want a little bit of shadow because I don't want it to be too striped. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just shadow it out a little bit. You could still leave some highlights. There, so that shadows it up a little bit and you can even add a little Payne's Gray if you want to. And I'm gonna add a little Payne's Gray kind of where the stem and the cap meet, just so it looks a little bit more shadowed where that stem is. You could even bring it down the stem a little bit if you want to. So this is just Payne's Gray and I'm just pouncing it onto my paper, just to giving it a little bit of shadow. All right, so I'm gonna clean off my brush, put it aside, pick up my size zero again, and I'm gonna do the same thing to this one up here. Pick up my Burnt Umber, and this one here, I'm gonna do the, the curves going a different way. This one I had them going out, this one here, I'm gonna have them coming in like that, just to show you the two different looks, like that. So this is coming in and those were going out. All right, I'm gonna wash my, off my brush, put it aside a second, pick up my size five, just clean water on my size five, and I'm gonna blur it out in certain areas because I don't want this to be too perfectly striped. You can pick up a little bit of your Payne's Gray again, and drop it in. And this one down here, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. It just lightened up a little bit too much on me, so I'm just dropping in a little bit more down here too. If you think that's a little too dark, clean brush, pick up some of it and dab it off on your paper towel. That way it lightens it up a little bit if you think it's a little too dark. And we're gonna go ahead and do this one here. Now this one, the lines are gonna be kind of similar to the one that we just did. So I'm gonna come up with a straight line right in the middle, and then these are just gonna be kind of curving inward, like the last mushroom we just did. If it's too striped for you, clean brush. I picked up my size five, and I'm gonna blur it out in certain sections here. I picked up a little bit of that Payne's Gray again just to shadow up some areas. Don't forget the part of the mushroom down here too. You wanna to definitely shadow that part up because that is definitely hiding between all the mushrooms here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and then we'll see how it dried if we add a, need to add another little, uh, another little layer. That looks really good. So we're gonna do a little bit on the bottom here, a little bit on the ground. And I'm just gonna take um, that burnt umber and black mixture that I had made. And I'm just gonna bring it in a little bit down here, just around the stems, like there's a, like a ground down there. And I'm gonna bring in a little bit of a green also I think I'm gonna bring in a little bit of my um, my green blue. And actually, let me dab some of that off. It's a little too dark. So just take a clean paper towel, 
dab some of it off. You can make it as splotchy as you want because this is just the ground. And I'm gonna add some of my green blue, just dabbing it on around my mushroom. Just adds an, a little extra um, interest to your painting when you add another color like that. So wherever your horizon line is on one side of your subject, make sure it's on the other side also. It'd look kind of funny if you came all the way up and then this one was all the way down here. It'd look really funny. You just want your horizon line almost like an imaginary line right through your page. All right, I really like that with the green in there. That's really pretty. All right, so let's go ahead and start adding a little bit of detail <clears throat> to our mushrooms. I'm taking my Dr. Martin uh, Bleed Proof White and you can take a paintbrush that you don't really <clears throat> that you don't really care about. So I'm just taking a generic paintbrush. I'm going to take a little bit of my white, and I'm going to make some like little circles right where we had put those shadows, like that. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing to this side, to this mushroom. I mean. And you can actually have some bleeding off your page too, if you want to, off your subject. Like just put it on the edge, like right like that. If you want to add a little bit of white detail to this one too, you could. Just kind of follow along with that original pattern you had done. And you can go ahead and put a little bit of a highlight on like the, the rims here of the cap if you want to bring in a little bit of a white highlight even coming down the mushroom on the left on the right side if you want to just bring in some lines coming down a little bit you can just to lighten up your mushroom a little bit you could even come up with your white a little bit if you want to put some highlights even on the bottom of the caps here There, really pretty. All right, so one other thing I'm gonna do is, um, we'll wash off your brush and close up your um, bleed proof white because the stuff does dry out um, very quickly. So just go ahead and make sure that this is nice and tight. I am gonna bring in a little bit of my Arteza watercolor brush pens. I love using these, I've used them in other videos. And I just picked out similar colors to what I um, did on here. So I'm just using a red. And I'm gonna go over and just deepen up a little bit of the, the red shadowed side with my marker. Go around those little dots. So see how that darkens it up? It deepens it up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my size five just with water and I'm gonna blend it over, carefully going around those white dots. Just water and bring it to the other side. I went ahead and I pulled a yellow also. So I'm just gonna go over the yellow one here. Just deepen it up a little bit on the shadowed side. Little water. Blend it out. If you want, you can also go ahead, if it's not doing as dark as you want it, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit, oops, too much. I'm gonna go ahead, ahead and add a little bit of my, um, Burnt Umber, just to deepen up the left side, the shadowed side a little bit more on this mushroom. Just like that. Just dabbing it on. And if you want, you could do the same thing even to the red one. Take a little bit of your Burnt Umber or Payne's Gray, whatever color you choose. Just go over your, your shadowed side. Just a little bit to deepen it up a little bit more that. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing to this one. Just deepen it up a little bit, maybe more towards the middle in the left side. Like that. 
I'm gonna bring some of that down a little bit here, shadow that up down here too a little bit. I just wanted to bring in a little bit of my, my burnt umber because it was looking like my whole painting was starting to blend together here and I really wanted this side of the mushroom to stand out. So I darkened it up. Clean brush, you could drag some of it off if you want to. Like that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and dry this and then we're just gonna bring a little bit of our Micron pen, our archival ink, and uh, then we should be done. Okay, so our painting is nice and dry and I've got my Micron, a size three, um, the archival ink, and I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of, um, a little bit of lines, like a broken up line going around my mushroom. So I'm starting with the stem and I'm just kind of mimicking those lines that we had done with our paintbrush before, going right down my stem here. And I'm gonna do mostly just the, the left side because that's the shadowed side. And you can have them be a shaky little line. It can be broken up. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then go and mimic those lines that you had done underneath the cap here too. And I'm gonna do mostly, again, just the left side and I'm gonna leave this side more of the highlighted. And you can even come around your mushroom if you want to. A little bit even on the tops here, on the cap. It'll just make it pop from the paper just a little bit more. You don't want to go ahead and trace your whole mushroom, but maybe just a little bit. And if you want, you can even bring in um, some little like grassy strokes, some just like little strokes like that, maybe around your mar your um, your mushroom. So it just kind of adds like, oh, there's like grass or something there, like that. What I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to put a couple more smaller polka dots on the red one, just because right now the polka dots on the yellow and the red are pretty much the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some smaller little dots with my archival ink. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take a little brush and just start dabbing in some little, little, little dots. Just so it kind of gives a little bit of a difference from the red to the yellow because they were just looking a little bit too similar to me. Make as many little dots as you want. You know, as I was sitting here, I decided I wanted to put a little bit of a splatter mark behind the mushrooms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a mixture of my, let's see, what color do we wanna do? Let's do the yellow. So I'm gonna do my yellow ochre. I'm gonna take my yellow ochre and I'm gonna make a nice wash of it right here, just a puddle. Get it nice and wet. And I'm going to take another brush and I'm going to splatter it and just hit it like that. It makes some little polka dots. Just to add a little extra interest. It just adds a little bit of an extra interest in your background. And then if you wanted to, you could just take a brush and you could even bleed some of those out if you want to. Just adds a little bit extra um, dimension. You can let it dry and then you can add the polka dots even again if you want to. Like that. I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna add another little layer of polka, dot, polka dots on top of that. Okay, so I'm gonna take that same mixture and I'm gonna apply it one more time. So then that way you have a little bit of those defined splatter marks in the front and then you've got a little bit blurred in the background too. Just like that. Perfect. And there you go. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up. And you can also make a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this one. And you can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Have a great day. Bye.